This is a prototype puff switch, an electronic switch that I can control without using my hands just by blowing into this straw. People who have trouble using their hands to push buttons or use joysticks can use puff switches to control things ranging from motorized wheelchairs to phones and computers. In this video, I'll show you how to build a simple puff switch using craft materials and interface it with a tiny programmable board called a microbit that has a built-in speaker and grid of LEDs, but you could also connect it to another hobbyist board of your choice like an Arduino or Raspberry Pi. Let's forget the puff switch for a minute and start with the basics. The microbit has a row of pins on the edge here, and you can write code that I will show you in a minute that will detect when one pin is connected to another pin. So for example, I'm going to take my alligator clip here, connect one end to pin zero, and nothing happens when I do that, but when I take the other end and connect it to the three volt pin here, I will have a closed circuit that is detected by the micro bit, and it is going to light up and play sound. When I remove the alligator clip, the program makes the lights turn off and the sound stops. The basic idea behind any button or switch is that you are just closing two electrical contacts to make that closed circuit. So here, instead of a single alligator clip connecting both of the micro bits pins, I have one alligator clip connected to pin zero, one connected to the three volt pin, and they are both connected to these pieces of aluminum foil, which is electrically conductive. So when I touch the pieces of aluminum foil together, it will close the circuit and the micro bit will detect it, make the smiley face and play the sound. Now, I'm doing this with my hands, but the idea behind a puff switch is simple. What if you can't use your hands? Someone could have a medical condition like cerebral palsy or an injury from an accident that leaves them unable to use their hands, but they can still use their head, face, and mouth muscles to interface with controls. So, rather than having something mechanical that I need to push on, I want to design and build something that I can blow on to cause these two pieces of aluminum foil to come into contact with each other. One very simple way you can do that is to design a very light and flexible hinge. So have a fixed support, something like a piece of cardboard, and here I just have a thin piece of tape with a gap between the tape, sorry, between the cardboard and the aluminum foil that allows this little sheet of aluminum foil to rotate, and it's so light and so flexible that I can just blow on it. So if I take a straw off screen here and blow on it, you can see I get a pretty good range of motion for the aluminum foil. So if I have another fixed piece mounted to something and there is a gap between them, by default they will not touch, but when I blow on this one, it will move over and touch closing the circuit. One thing to watch out for when doing this is that you need to remember that you also need an electrical connection and the alligator clips can be kind of heavy and there is some stiffness to the wires. So if I just take my alligator clip and clip it directly onto that aluminum foil there, you see that it's going to be much harder for me to blow on it and get that aluminum foil to move. So it does still move a little bit, but not quite as much, and then it's kind of held in place and doesn't flex back and forth as much because of the alligator clip. So there is a way to account for that in the design, which I will show you next. So here we have the mechanical design or prototype that I came up with, but this is by no means the only way or the correct way to do this. So you can certainly come up with a different design if you think you have something better, but I will walk you through how I did it. So first, I have that fixed piece of aluminum foil, which is just a tall strip here attached to a vertical piece of cardboard that is hot glued to the base with some support so that does not wobble. And that one is easy to connect an alligator clip to. I can just connect it anywhere. It doesn't move, so I don't have to worry about the weight or stiffness of the clip. Next, I have the movable piece, which I have attached to this support frame that I built with binder clips instead of more permanent hot glue, so I can swap these out and test different designs more easily. So the basic idea here is the same as what I showed you earlier. I have a piece of aluminum foil connected to a piece of cardboard with the tape that acts as a hinge and allows the aluminum foil to bend. But you see that I didn't cut a square piece of aluminum foil this time. It has this little extension that goes up here onto the cardboard and gives me a place to connect the alligator clip that isn't going to affect the motion of this lower flexible piece. And again, rather than gluing this on up here, I can use alligator clips. So if I want to swap out different, sorry, not alligator clips, binder clips. So if I want to swap out different designs 
for that part. It's not a super permanent connection. I don't have to worry about ripping off the glue. I just swapped them out with the binder clips here. Finally, I have the straw, which is glued into these cardboard supports here, but I used a bendy straw so the mouthpiece is movable and you can easily aim it to wherever the user is seated if you're using this at a desk or a table, but you could design something, for example, that mounts onto the headrest or arm of a wheelchair. You also might want to make something where the straw is more easily removable so you can clean it or swap out different straws if you are testing with different users so you don't have people sharing germs. Finally, showing the alligator clip connections again, I'm going to have one connected to my fixed piece of aluminum foil and the other one connected up here to the top of the movable piece. But again, it's not connected to the part that is actually below the hinge and moving back and forth because that way its weight and stiffness is not going to affect that motion. And I can blow into the straw to activate my switch. Next, we will switch over to the computer to take a look at the microbit code. We are going to demonstrate programming the microbit in a graphical programming environment called MakeCode. This is good for beginners because you drag and drop blocks of code that snap together to build your program, but you can also program a microbit in JavaScript or Python. To start our program, we are going to go down to Advanced, then click on Pins, click on More, and drag out a set pull pin block. You can snap that into the on start block because this is something we only need to happen once at the beginning of our program. It doesn't need to happen over and over again. And you are going to change this drop down menu here to down. And what this ensures is that when nothing is connected to pin zero, it will read low or zero. And then as we'll see later in the program, when it is electrically connected to the three volt pin on the micro bit, it's going to read high or one. Next, we're going to go up here to logic and grab an if else statement. Drag that out and snap it into the forever block because this is something we want the code to keep doing over and over again, not just once at the beginning of the program. We want to check if some condition is true. And the condition we're going to check is if the value on pin zero is high or low. So we're going to go into logic again drag out an equals comparison, and we need to check the value on pin zero. So we're going to do that by going down here to the pins menu again, drag out digital read pin zero, and this is going to read that pin and give us either a zero or a one. So I'm going to change this to a one, although you could leave it as zero and your code would work the same way. You would just flip the conditions in the two parts of your if else statement. So now this is set up to detect if that digital read on pin zero is one, meaning your circuit or switch is closed and you're connected to the three volt pin, or else you have an open circuit and it's not connected. So now you can fill whatever code you want into the if else statement, depending on what you want to happen when the switch is closed and when the switch is open. For example, if you want to show a smiley face and play a buzzing sound like I showed earlier in the video, you can go up here to basic and you can either draw your own icon with the grid of LEDs or use the available icons in the drop down menu with the show icons block. So I'm going to select the smiley face and then you can play sounds, either single notes or musical melodies from all of the different options here under music in the menu. So I'm just going to drag out the default play tone middle C for one beat. Now, if we do that, the first time I ever push the switch or close the circuit, it's going to show the smiley face, but then the smiley face will never go away. So under my else part of the statement here, I am going to add a clear screen block. So that way when the switch is not closed, it will clear the screen and not show the smiley face, but you could add something else here. For example, showing a frowning, frowning face instead of a smiley face. When you're ready, click the download button and follow the on-screen instructions to send the code to your micro bit. You can always come back and make changes to your code, then re-download it if you want to try something else. For more microbit projects, as well as other electronics projects you can do with boards like Arduino and Raspberry Pi, check out the rest of our YouTube channel. You can also check it out for over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, which you can also find on our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.